What's going on? Charles Botenston here, and today we're going to be talking about probably one of the best things that you're going to hear. Um, you hear Gary Vaynerchuk talking about it all the time about a 10 year plan, and you know, uh, how, how do you plan out your life? You know, it's one of those things that if you don't have a focus, which I didn't have for 23 years of my life, then you pretty much don't have a focus at all. In other words, if you don't have a direction, you know, that's why athletes or say, you know, someone that wins an award that's an actor and they get up there and they're doing the Academy Award speech or the Oscar speech and they get up there and they say, you know, I've been thinking about this since I was 13 years old, standing up here, giving the speech and everything like that. You know, Matthew McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey had a recent one pretty much talking about just that. He said, you know, he's been envisioning this moment and that was his focus. That was his direction. So there's two things about it. Number one is once you get there, what do you do? Once you win the championship, once you make the team, once you get an A+, plus, once you get into the college, once you get that girlfriend or that boyfriend you want, or once you get the money, once you get the accolades, what do you do? Do you stop? Do you grow? Do you continue? Do you move on? Do you have a different focus? Do you plateau? These are all questions that you have to ask yourself because you will reach that point if you are persist persistent, relentless, and you're able to actually get over the goals or I'm sorry, get over the hurdles to get to the goals. So in other words, say you want to make the sports team. You try all day, all night. You eat well. You're practicing for, say, basketball. You're shooting free throws. You're behind the, the line. You're working on your, your weak hand for the layup. Your, uh, you know, your endurance is amazing. And then you make the team. Yeah. Okay, great. You made the team, but do you want to be a starter? And then once you're a starter, do you want to be a captain? Once you're a captain, do you want to win a championship? Do you want to be the MVP in the league? Do you want to be the, the greatest of all time? It's like, and then once you're the greatest of all time, it's really within yourself. How do you keep on competing? So today we're going to be talking about long-term goals, okay? Listen, when I was up until about 20, probably, probably up until about 26, 27 years old, I never thought of long-term goals. I never... Long-term goals was like a month. <laughs> I was like, if I could keep on doing this for a month, that's a long-term goal. I'm going to celebrate the shit out of it. Uh, once I hit 28, I said, wow. Once I hit a 29, I was like, wow. Once I hit 30, I was like, this is long-term. And it's really hard once you're young to understand that there's life beyond the weekend, beyond next month or into next year, especially if you grew up with technology and you you instantaneously get everything from anything that you buy, if you're dating, you you instantly get swipes and single people right there from email to social media to pictures to Google searches, you get everything instantaneously. So there's a very an incredible, before I get into the 10-year plan, there's an incredible uh, video. Gary is asked, Gary Vaynerchuk is asked, uh, how do you balance the fast paced and the long term? You know, because Gary rolls at like 150% every second of the day, yet he's always talking about long term. He's always chirping about you got to you got to look distance, patient, you know, things like that. So this is the best way that he actually broke it down. Unbelievable. He said the macro, in other words, the overarching is patience. It's long term, but the micro, in other words, what you do day to day is fast. So you make as many calls as you can if you're in sales. You uh, you study as much as you can. You learn as much as you can. You go to the gym as much as you can. And when you're there, you're a hundred percent. As Grant Cardone talks about, when he's there, he's a hundred percent in. When he's at work, he's a hundred percent in. When he's with his family, he's a hundred percent there. When he's with his wife, hundred percent there. So. That is the micro, in other words, the second to second, the minute to minute, day by day. But the macro is the patience that when you do the day to day, when you do the micro correctly, you will have everything that you need in the macro, in the long term, in the 10 years, the 15 years. And and I know, you know, under 30 years old, it's really, really challenging to think of long term at all. And you hear it all the time, but it's one of those things that until you actually believe it you you can't see it like wh when the t when you're ready to learn the teacher will show up or the teacher will show up when you're ready to learn whatever that is it was the same thing with me is that for 22 years of my life I wasn't ready I, I didn't read I didn't go to the gym I was pretty pretty worthless when it came to you know ambitions and drive and success and and things like that and then when I whatever I have no idea you know call it grace of the universe God 
uh, source, power, something just clicked where I just said enough is enough. I made a decision. Then I just never looked back, which was bettering myself. And ironically enough before, you know, and I know I do a little bit of a rant in the beginning, but this is really the, the setup to a 10 year plan because it's like going to the gym. It's like, if you don't understand that you could fail at one time and by fail, I mean, give up going to the gym, then when it happens or when those, those those thoughts of doubt come into your mind about, is this working for the 10 year plan? You'll just give up and you'll be like, it wasn't meant to be. It was for other people, it wasn't for me. Other people should get rich and famous and wealthy and successful and have incredible lives and relationships or whatever else. It's like, no, everyone should. So you have to understand that not, listen, this is the biggest thing that I've learned recently is that literally within the last month is that humans are supposed to be imperfect. Imagine everything is perfect. Do you understand how boring life would be? Say everything was absolutely perfect at all times. There was never any issues. There's never any problems. Everything that you always wanted was given to you at all times. Do you understand? Imagine that you wake up, you feel absolutely glorious. Everything at any time is provided you fresh food and blah, blah, blah. And I know you're saying that that sounds amazing, Charles, but there's no contrast. And that's what gives you the con that's what gives you the confidence in say a 10 year plan or a five year plan, a one year plan, a one month plan is that all those hurdles that you overcome is where other people give up. All those hurdles and the longer that you go is where more and more people just start giving up, giving up, giving up, you know, one day, you know, you lose a couple of people one week, you lose a bunch of people a month, a year, 10 years, you just start losing and losing more people. So the people that could last 10 years of doing the right thing every single day, you will get your 10 year goal. You will, as long as you persist and you are relentless and you overcome everything that's going to come into your life. That's really challenging because there's going to be recessions. There's going to be, you're going to be hung over the, someone, you know, is going to die. There's going to be bankruptcies. There's going to be people that steal from you. There's going to be breakups or divorces or bankrupts, you know, there's going to be so much that happens. And if you really want to figure it out, listen to or watch or read about Lincoln's life, Abraham Lincoln, what he went through, the failures, the people that were close to him. He, I think he lost his, uh, one of his children, his wife and someone else in the same year within like six months. And then was like was trying to get elected to pretty much every position in government and was getting defeated, defeated, defeated. He had like two uh, bankruptcies or business failures. That is relentless. That is the 10 year plan. This is what I want to do. And all, all I could say, all I could say is that confidence comes from bettering yourself, knowing you could do it. And how do you better yourself? How do you get, how do you know that you could do it is when you read, when you educate, when you're self-aware, okay, I'll give you two self-aware tips right now. Self-aware for me on Friday, I went out and, you know, I, I drink maybe once a week, you know, maybe twice a week, but last Friday I drank a little too much. I was hung over. And then Saturday, I just remember walking around and, and just being like, I don't want to be this non-productive. So that's me being self-aware and say, listen, you know what, Charles, you know, you had a great time last night, but you, you just can't do this because you're, you had an amazing night, but you're wasting an entire day of being not productive. Like, yeah, I was relatively productive, but not what I wanted to be on a Saturday. The other is this morning I had coffee. I'm not really a coffee drinker. I have it maybe once or twice uh, a week and even then I had it this morning. I, it's just like, I don't like the way that I feel afterwards. So it's one of those things that I don't like the way that I felt on Saturday. I didn't like the way that I felt this morning. So it's like, be self-aware when you have meat. How do you feel when you have too much bread or you don't go to the gym or you don't make sales calls or you don't approach that pretty girl or whatever? How, how's that feeling? How is that feeling? So why, why is that the setup for the 10 year goal? Number one is because if you can't understand how to overcome 
one day, one hour, one minute hurdles. Someone calls you something, you post a video of your creation that is say, uh, you know, something that you want, you're passionate about. Say you're in photography and you post a, a photo or you are a blogger and someone reacts terribly to your article. How do you, how do you take that? Do you just say, do you just keel over and say, you know what, you're right. I'm, it's just not meant to be. The reason being is that if you can't overcome that, you're never going to get your 10 year goal. So number one is you have to find out what, what you really like. That That's just minimum. That's just absolutely minimum. For me, I love reading. I love reading. I love learning. I love understanding stuff, things that I have no idea about from quantum physics to calculus to mathematics. You know, I was listening to this guy, uh, his name is Bull, and he essentially he was in he was in Ireland in the 1850s, and he essentially came up with the the mathematic calculations in calculus that Albert Einstein eventually used for obviously the I don't know if they call it the unified, but obviously E equals M Z squared, and then the Boolean effect, which is on and off, which is ones and zeros in computing. We wouldn't have any of that if it wasn't for Boole. Like, and no one's heard of him. He's like the most underrated person. But I would never have learned about him and the appreciation for you listening to this if it wasn't for, I think his name, first name is Robert, Robert Boole. If it wasn't for him. So number one is, what do you like? What do you like doing? Do you like exercising? Do you like art? Do you like photography? Do you like social media? Obviously, everyone likes social media. Most people like social media. It's just ingrained because it's it's something new. There's usually some drama behind it. There's someone's opinion. You get to judge it. You get to feel better about yourself. It's like the Kardashians, except online. It was like the Kardashians invented social media because you could just go on and just see all this BS and feel better about yourself. And that's why they're still around. They're still relevant. Do you understand how much crap they've taken? and they're still quote unquote relevant you know i i don't follow them a because i don't have tv and b i don't consume social media but you have to find out what you like you have to find out what you like and how do you find out what you like you have to try so much shit in your life that you know what you like like that's the thing is nobody wants to try anything what did i say in the beginning of this i literally in the last month i learned that being imperfect is human. Being imperfect is human. If we are not imperfect, you're not trying. You're not striving for more. And that's the thing is you need to not only strive for more, but you need to understand that you're going to be making mistakes. So find out what you like, number one. Number two is you have to have a growth mindset. If you don't have a growth mindset, you're never going to be able to make your 10-year goal because in 10 years, AR and VR and, uh, you know, AI is all going to be, you know, artificial intelligence, uh, artificial. It's really going to be computing intelligence. It's really going to be ingrained in this. You know, we're going to have wearables, which is probably contact lenses. We're going to have self-driving cars. We're going to have, you know, renewable energy is going to be just in battery operated is going to be everything. We're not going to use fuel or anything. Like if you, if you're in the car industry and you're Ford or you're GM, you have to understand that in 10 years, you're probably going to be wiped out unless you become a Tesla. Like that's the growth mindset. That's the 10 year growth mindset. If you're in photography and you don't have a big following on Instagram, you're losing it. Instagram is where it's at. If you're an artist and you're not showing your creation before, you know, like if you're an artist and you just show the end product, that's fantastic, but show it along the way. I remember seeing this uh, leather handbag maker, I think it was in Europe, and they were going over how they made the bag from the beginning. They didn't just show the end product, they showed how they made the strap and the buckle and the hand sewing and how they they dyed the leather and then they, they actually curated it and, and it was amazing so what do you like you have to have a growth mindset and when you're talking about a 10-year plan who do you need to be today and who do you need to become tomorrow okay who do you need to be today in other words do you need to be someone that starts public speaking is it someone that needs to buy equipment to ensure that your photography is A plus, or do you need to buy a microphone like I did for a better podcasting? My microphone, it plugs right into my iPhone. So whenever someone says, 
you know, I don't have the equipment. You have an iPhone. I took all of my YouTube videos on my iPhone for, I don't know, two years since the beginning. Okay. There's no excuse. I didn't have a microphone. I didn't have a camera. I just used my phone and it's about the content. Listen, at one time, yes, you're going to have to upgrade the quality of it, but that's not to stop you from beginning. So who do you need to be today? And by who do you need to be, you know, like, what do you need to do? What are the habits that you need to, so what did I, what did I accomplish today coming to work and doing this podcast? It's a Sunday, it's 12.52 PM. And to be honest, I'm feeling really weird right now because I had the coffee this morning. I was hungover on Saturday. I'm getting, I'm 30, I'm turning 32. So it's like, I can't be doing that. Those are not the habits that are going to get me the 10 year plan that I want. And literally right after this podcast, I'm going to write down, who do I need to be? So who do I need to be? Let's go over that. I need to be healthy. I need to be sleeping. I need to be learning. I need to get a better social circle. I need to have great relationships. I need to, and it's not, I need to, I know I'm saying I need to, but it's more about like, who do you need to be to attract those people into your life? You need to be giving value. You need to be giving information. You need to be, if you want to become a writer, you have to be writing. You have to be a writer. You have to call yourself a writer. Like I am a writer that's become, and then tomorrow, who do I need to be? I need to be, I need to be a great communicator. I need to be, uh, be a great leader. I need to, I need to do things that get me the goal. So it's who do you need to become today? What do you need to do today? And who do you need to become tomorrow? Those are the questions. And then you need to dial it down. So I worked backwards. I'll talk about my 10 year goals, bring it up on my computer over here. Okay. I have a spreadsheet or not a spreadsheet. I'm sorry. I use Google drive, highly recommend it. Google drive. If you have gmail.com, you get 15 gigs of uh, stuff for free storage, all cloud storage, highly recommend it. So 10 years from today, this is, I have all the way up to 20 years from today, you know, top firm globally, that's in 15 years. In 10 years, I wanna expand my company internationally. I wanna have my vision map realized and my vision map is, I'm gonna have a media company, my brokerage company, I'm gonna be speaking and writing, I'm gonna have uh, personal products, I'm gonna be consulting, buying and selling companies, have a real estate empire, coaching and seminars. It sounds like a lot, but that's 10 years away. 10 years. That's a long time, okay? That is patience. But how do I realize that? How do I realize that today? Because it's so easy to get down the track of, Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, I, I want that, but I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow is your busiest day. Then the next day is your busiest day. In other words, you never start because you always feel you have more time. But the thing is, when you start pushing it off, and I'm guilty of this, when you start pushing it off, you have a downward spiral of never starting, number one. And number two is when you start, you give up because you don't understand how hard it is or the habits that you need, which is waking up early. And if I'm waking up early, I still need my eight hours of sleep. You know, some people could survive off of five or seven. You know, some people need nine. So what does that mean? You have to reverse engineer. If I get up at 5.30, what time do I need to go to bed? You know, I, I just uh, replied to a comment on YouTube and the guy was saying, or girl, was saying that, you know, I, I want to be waking up earlier, but I just can't. No, you can. You just convince yourself you can't. You're just going to bed later, which it, listen, if you want to go to bed late and wake up late, that's fine. But what do you do during that time? When you wake up late and go to bed late, what are you doing? Mark Zuckerberg, that's what he did. He, he would code Facebook until like 10 or midnight, sleep a little bit, wake up and then code some more. It's like he worked his ass off between the hours that he was awake. I don't care what you do. Just don't complain about saying, I wish I am doing this. Because it's not that there's an outside force like saying you can't do this. That's bullshit. Someone saying I can't wake up early. No, you can. You just choose not to. That's the difference. You have to tell yourself. This is super important. I just learned this as well. Is that you have to say when you are doing something that you may not want to be doing, which is maybe eating a pint of ice cream or waking up later than you want. You, you have to say you have to give yourself the power by saying, 
I choose to go to bed late. I choose to wake up at 9 a.m. instead of 6, p- 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. You know, and this is the thing is don't automatically just go from 9 9 a.m. to 6 a.m. Like that's impossible. You're not going to be able to sustain a three-hour waking up earlier difference because your circadian clock, your circadian clock is essentially the internal clock of you. What time do you go to bed? What time do you wake up? Uh, and it varies for everyone. Like there's a security guy at my office that his shift – His working shift is, I think, 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. to like 9 a.m. or 12 to 9 a.m. His circadian clock is to sleep during the day and to be awake at night. That's his circadian clock. What is yours? Mine is 9 p.m. to about 5 o'clock, 5 a.m. So you have to just wake up 10 minutes earlier, you know, once a week, just 10 minutes earlier. That's it. Then your body gets used to that. Then you go 15 minutes, your body gets used to that. You get the point, all right? It's the same thing with anything. Like people want to make this drastic quantum leap, but it doesn't happen. It's like, say you're not used to public speaking and they say, okay, why don't you go up on stage in front of 5,000 people and and present your ideas? Bullshit. You're going to be so nervous because you're not used to it. But if you went from 10 people to 15 to 20 to 100 to 1,000 to 5,000, that, that, stepping stone and ladder is way more authentic and and will jive with how comfortable you are you're 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 not having this big expanse of you know what it is it's like people that lose a drastic amount of weight immediately you know they go on the biggest loser and then they lose a huge amount of weight and then they come home and they go right back into their eating habits the thing is they're not used to being 30 pounds 40 pounds 50 pounds lighter or looking really good and feeling really good. They're not used to that. Their body is not used to that. Their mindset, their their standard in life, their standard in health is not used to that. So they go back to what's comfortable. And we do it all the time. I do it as well. Listen, I am not preaching here on a, on a high horse. I make as many mistakes, if not more than you, okay? The thing is, I don't dwell on it, number one is. Number two is, I get over it immediately. You know, Tony Robbins said he used to give himself 48 hours. Now he gives himself five minutes, something really shitty happens. He goes ballistics for five seconds. And then he says, okay, how do we handle it? Solution oriented. Now he doesn't even really, he just goes, okay, what do we need to do? And he does, I think like five, six billion between his 12 or 18 companies. He does, I think five or 6 billion in sales a year. Like that's insane. That's an insane amount of money. So what do you, so I'll just talk about my 10 year plan and then working backwards 10 years out, I'll be 41. I'm going to be doing two billion in sales, two billion in selling real estate, not two billion in actual money sales. I'll be expanding internationally. I'm going to be speaking at Business Mastery, which is Tony Robbins. So these are the things like, don't model me, do you, but have big goals, okay? And then seven years from now, absorb real estate operations nationally. My uh, holdings company is going to be acquiring its first business, and I'm going to be speaking at Buffini. Buffini uh, is Brian Buffini, which is a, a real estate guru. So, and I'm going to be doing a billion in sales in seven years. I'm going to be 38 years old. That's 2023. 2021, five years from now, I'll be 36. Uh, BPI acquisitions and development will be going strong and heavy. Uh, 50 or 500 million in sales four years from now, three years from now. And then I work all the way back. And now in two th- when I'm recording this, obviously 2017, I have month to month. What am I doing month to month? And I literally boil it down day to day. You know, like I'm going to be setting someone up as an employee. This is just today, setting up someone as an employee. Uh, I'm going to be checking my CRM, which is my customer relationship management. I'm going to be writing a note. I'm going to be doing the evening routine blog for you guys. So why is that important? Because writing a note is helping out my business. Setting someone up as an employee is helping out my business. Do you understand that it doesn't start in 10 years? It doesn't, you know, like when people see a success, they don't, they see Tom Brady just rip through the Super Bowl and come back and score 19 points or whatever they did, come back and win. It's like Tom Brady didn't start today. He didn't start yesterday. The guy has a ridiculous eating lifestyle. Like the guy, what is he, 39, 40 years old right now? The guy has a ridiculous eat, and he's a quarterback. 
Like, you should not be playing quarterback because your arm goes, you're not as quick, your your actual speed on the ball, everything. Like, yeah, you could read a defense better. Like Peyton Manning, incredible read of defenses. Like, he's seen it before. But it didn't start with Peyton Manning last year winning the Super Bowl or Tom Brady this year winning the Super Bowl. It started 10 years ago when they, they took the steps. They were comfortable on the stage of being in the Super Bowl of being down and coming back and winning. They've, they've experienced that before. It's the same thing with you, is that if you don't experience things, and I'm getting all jazzed up right now, if you don't experience things, you're never going to be able to overcome talking in front of 5,000 people. You know, I know that, why is Gary Vaynerchuk so good at talking in front of large, large audiences and just being so vulnerable and authentic? It didn't start today or yesterday he, he's been in the game making YouTube videos since 2006, 2007. He was sitting in front of a camera drinking wine and spitting it out into a spit bucket and saying, this is great, this Bordeaux is great, blah, blah, blah. Then he started a media company in what, 2009, 2008? And then he, he ate shit for three years. It's the same thing with you, all right? You have to get this through your mind. And, and I'm, 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 not, I'm saying this more as a father figure than any anyone else because I'm not saying this as like a high horse and listen to who I am but it's I'm saying this because I'm going through it okay when I feel two things when I feel that I either know everything or I feel that I've accomplished something that's when I plateau and then I don't reach the goals for that month or that quarter. And then when I don't reach it for the quarter, I don't reach it for the year. And if I don't reach it for the year, then I start losing confidence. If you start losing confidence, then you'll start not reaching it for five or 10 years out. All right. So it starts today, today. So let's just recap this. I'm going to let you guys go. Number one is who do you need to be today? Who do you need to be? You need to be healthy. You need to be sleeping perfectly. You need to avoid the bullshit drama of social media and news and politics in your life. You need to avoid people that are negative, that are bringing you down. You have to see who your social circle is. You have to see what your job is. Are you plateauing in your job? Do you have the money? Do you have the, then when you're going to your vision, you have to say, okay, what do I like? All right. I like photography. I want to be the best photographer in the world, or I like portraits, or I like blogging, or I like fashion or art or basketball or soccer or whatever the hell you like. I don't care what you like. You have to say, this is what I want to do with it. And then in 10 years, and then you reverse engineer every single year and you give yourself milestones every single year for 10 years. And then you work it all the way back to every single month of the year that you're in. And it's the same thing with me is that I have monthly goals every single, I, every single month of this year, I have goals that I want to reach. And then next year, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to break down the year be like, okay, where am I at? What do I need to do? So it's the same thing with you is that break down the far reaching goal, make it bigger than what you think it is, and then bring it all the way back. And just try, you know, I know I, I put in sales, which is how much sales also have development in there. Like what's your health? Do you want to run a marathon? Do you want to, you know, bike a hundred miles? You know, whatever the case is, you have to, you have to dial it down to small little steps. Highly, highly recommend two books. One is Mini Habits, and the other one is, I was going to say Success Principles by Jack Canfield, but Mini Habits is an amazing book because it breaks it down. And the other one is a morning routine. You got to get a morning routine. If you don't have a morning routine, you don't have a life. So let me know if you have any questions. I know this is uh, 